Today, inshallah, we will start with uh, with the details of, I mean, how since the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he became a messenger, and we'll keep going, inshallah. No, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he reached forty, or before he reached forty, few months before he reached forty, he used to love more to stay in Ghar Hira, in the cave of Hira. He used to go to Ghar Hira. Ghar Hira is, I mean, a cave. The name of that cave was Hira. It was a small, it is a small cave. Uh, it is actually, it is only for one person, but still, like two people can be there. Ghar Hira is in one mountain. The name of that mountain is Abu Hubais. And actually, if you have a chance to go there, I don't know who had a chance to go there. Not up. If you have a chance to go there and get in the cave, in the cave, there is a place for one person, this is one. And second, there is, uh, you know, there is a hole that from that hole, you can see the Kaaba. Of course, not anymore. Now you cannot really see it because of the buildings and so on. And of course it is far. It is not close to Kaaba, but you still can see it. But not now. Now, because of the building, you cannot see it anymore. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he used to go there and spend long time there. Now there are different ways or let us say different sources of the history. Some they say that he used to go only only during Ramadan. And some they say that he used to go and spend uh, one month there and then few days in Mecca and then go back again. But anyway, what we say is that he used to go there and spend days and days there. So he used to take with him the drink, he used to take with him the food, stay there when they finish, then he go back home to collect more and go back. And here there is something we need to learn. You know, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he started to feel those things, when he went and talked to Warafa ibn Nawfal, and you know, when he heard the story from others, Bahira and so on, when all of those things happened, so Khadija, she already prepared herself that she is the wife of the messenger. So when she when she could feel this, then what did she do? And this is one of the things that 
our sisters they need to learn. When you find your husband needs help in something big he is doing, then you should support. Khadija didn't tell him that, hey, where are you going? You are not taking care of the house. She didn't say that you have to stay here, you have to stay with me, you shouldn't leave me alone, you shouldn't sleep in another place. She didn't say any of this. She was supporting him, she was taking care of him. When he comes back home, she was taking care of him, she was preparing the food for him and so on. And she never complained about this. Now, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the last six months before Jibreel came to him, in the last six months, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, whenever he see a dream, it happens exactly the same. So we can say that the first revealing, and not revealing, the, the first inspiration was by dreams. So this is why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said that one out of 46 parts that the dream, the dreams, is one out of 46 parts of becoming a prophet. It means that if you always see dreams, if you are a good person, you are a righteous person, you are a good believer, and you always see dreams that they happen, this means that you are one out of 46 parts as a prophet. Why are they one out of 46 parts? Because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he spent six months seeing the dream that is exactly what will happen. And totally, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as a messenger, how many years? 23 years. So 23 years means how many six months? They are 46 months. So one out of 46 months, they are the six months that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to see the dream and become true. Then, then, one day, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was in Ghar Hira, in the cave of Hira, and actually that day was in Ramadan, and some they say it was in 27th of Ramadan, some they say it was in 21st of Ramadan. That was the day that Jibreel came to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Jibreel came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Jibreel, he appeared to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he hold him, he hugged him very strong. Then he left him. And he said, Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, he said, Iqra. What is the meaning of Iqra? It means read. And, and of course we know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was illiterate, he was unable to read and write. Later we will say what is the wisdom of this. So, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Jibreel 
He said, "Ma ana biqare." I am unable to read. Then he hugged him again and released him, and he said, "Iqra again." Then still the Prophet Muhammad sallam also he answered. He said, "Ma ana biqare." I am unable to read. Then the third time. Jibril alayhi salam, he said, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. This was the first revealed Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the fourth time, Jibril alayhi salam, he said, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. This was the first revealed Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, there are some other books in the seerah, they say that no, actually the first thing was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Al-Fatiha. That they say that once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was going back from Ghahira, going home, he saw Jibril, and Jibril was telling, was saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiki. But this is not so authentic part. We take the authentic part that most of the Sira books they mention it, which is what we said. This happened to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He catch this this part. Iqra bismi Rabbi kaladi khalaq khalaq al insan min alaq so so so. And we have to remember something. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, later he told him this, but it is from the beginning. Allah تبارك وتعالى told the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم سنقرئك فلا تنسى. We will, whenever we reveal something to you, you will never forget it. That Allah gave this to Muhammad, or that, 无论什么时候我将给你任何的经文，你就绝对不会忘记。So although it was the first time for the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to see Jibril like this, and it was the first time that there is a conversation between he and Jibril. A real conversation and real touch. Still, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't forget what Jibril said. Now, now when this happened to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was so scared. No. He went back home. He went back home. And when he arrived, he was saying, "Zemiluni, zemiluni." It means cover me. He was shaking, and he was feeling cold, although it was so hot. But he was really threatened by what happened. That he was very scared. He went back home. He went back home. He was shaking. 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 And we mentioned this before. Once he arrived, Khadija radiallahu anha, she right away she took care of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That we have mentioned before. That when the Prophet Muhammad came back, his wife Khadija, she did such a kind of thing. She came immediately to help him. She didn't start to blame him. She didn't start to blame him. She didn't say that yes, you deserve it. You are in the top of the mountain with those ghosts and with those. Aliens. She didn't say this. The, the, the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he told Khadija he told her I am scared and I don't know what happened to me. But then this is the point. What did Khadija reply? She said, Don't worry. She said, "La wallahi la yuzik Allahu abda. Allah will never let you down." Allah 绝对不会让你失望。Now, because Khadija, she knows who is Muhammad. Because Khadija, she knows who is Muhammad. So 
she said, she said that how come Allah will turn you down? How come Allah will let you down while you are doing the following? What are the following? She said, إِنَّكَ لَقَصِلُ الرَّحِمُ you are taking care of your relatives. That whenever, whenever there is any anything with your relatives, you go and visit them and so on. And you are, whenever there is a problem, you hold it by yourself and you try to solve it. Problem for others, not your problem. Whenever there is someone who is poor, you donate for him. Whenever there is a guest, anyone comes to your home, you are generous and you feed him and you take care of him. Whenever there is someone who has rights from others, you help him to take his rights back. See those things, Khadija, she already put them together to show us what are or what yes, what are the specifications of someone who is related to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, how are we close or far from those things? Are we taking care of our relatives? And here there is something, by the way, taking care of our relatives. There is something we need to understand. When my uncle, he likes me, and whenever I go to visit him, he is so happy, and he is offering me food and drink and everything, then this doesn't mean that I am taking care, that I am taking care of relatives. Of course, I still have to go and visit him and so on, but then I have another uncle, that whenever I visit him, he shouts me, and he is rude to me, and then and, and actually, that one, I should visit him more, if I really care to become, if I really care that I'm following what the Prophet Muhammad used to do. Whenever there is someone who needs help, you are donating. No matter who is this one. No matter is there a relation, a relation between you and that one or no. No matter who is he, what is the relation. Someone needs help. You need, you should help if you are really following what the Prophet Muhammad used to do. Khadija radiallahu anha, after she she comforted the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and after he became relaxed, she took him to Waraka ibn Nawfal. Waraka ibn Nawfal, he was one of the cousins of Khadija, and at the same time, Waraka ibn Nawfal, he was one of the people who were following the holy books, Taurat and Injil, and who even studied the Hebrew, studied Hebrew and was learning things from uh, from Taurat and Injil. So, Waraka ibn Nawfal start to ask the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, exactly what happened to him. Then, the Prophet Muhammad 
Allah Sallam he explained to Waraka Ibn Nawfal what happened exactly. So he told him, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, uh, sorry, so Waraka Ibn Nawfal, he told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him this is exactly the same as what happened to Musa. He told him, you are the messenger of this period, this time. Then he told him, this is another point. Then what if I know, but he told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, I swear by Allah, if I am still alive, when your people kick you out of your city, I would support you. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Mecca was everything to him. He was born in Mecca, he was raised in Mecca, he grown up in Mecca, he knows people in Mecca. People they respect him in Mecca. So when he heard this from Waraka, he was surprised. He said, Our are they going to kick me out? He was surprised. That they respect me. They like me. They believe me. They call me the you know the honest and so on, a father al Amin. And all of them they like me. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was surprised. Why are they going to kick me out? So this is the point. What if I know what he said? He said, anyone who comes to tell the truth will be kicked out. Because a human being in general feels that telling the truth is hard. In general, we human beings, when someone is flattering us, we are happy. Even if we know that he is not telling the truth. Even if we know that he is only flattering us, we still feel happy. But if it is the opposite, we will feel angry. Even if we know that that person is telling the truth. So in general, receiving the the real fact when it is not nice, we will not accept it. You know the people in Mecca that time, they were worshiping idols. So, did they have any rules? No. Did they have any orders? No. Did they have any things that they have to do and other things that they shouldn't do? Also, no. So then, and it is simple as we said yesterday, that anything could be God, no problem. And when your God is made of date, and you are hungry, you can eat your God, no problem. And then now you, Muhammad, you are coming to say that there is only one God. And then you are saying that there are rules. And there are prohibited things, and there are allowed things, and you know, this time for praying, and that time, no, we will not do it. And more above, those people of Mecca at that time, they were making big money because of religion, because of idols. You 
you know the you know the people that used to come for Hajj. And those people who were in charge of Mecca and Kaaba, they made their own policy and system. Like one of the systems they made, they said that when you want to make the tawaf, you know, when you want to make the circle around Kaaba, because this was even before Islam. So the people of Mecca, they put a system, a policy, that when you want to make this circle, then you shouldn't make it with your clothes, because your clothes are dirty, you know, you have a lot of sin. So you have to buy our clothes. And, and then of course that clothes, it was so expensive. Then some poor people, they say, we don't have enough money to buy these clothes. What to do? Then, then they said, you have to make this tawaf naked. So some people, they were making this tawaf naked. And some, they just paid the money to buy that clothes. So they were making money from everything. Then they used to say that you have to slaughter for this, you know, you have to slaughter the animal for this idol, and you have to slaughter it in front of this idol, you cannot slaughter it in your home. So when people slaughter, then what to do with those, all of this meat? People of the, the people of Mecca, they will take it and sell it. So they were making big money because of these Hajj and these idols. Then someone is coming to tell you that all of those idols, they are fake. You have to break them, destroy them, get rid of them. And then you cannot take money from people, you cannot ask people to slaughter for those idols. And more above, you have to worship one God who is Allah and you have to listen, you have to obey. Then of course, they will forget all the good things about Muhammad وسلم, and they will attack him. And here there is something we need to learn. When I put my personal things as a first priority, I will make mistakes. And I will disobey Allah. When I put Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala as a first priority, I will be relaxed and I will make everybody around me happy and relaxed. Today, all the problems of the Muslims, not only in Taiwan, today all the problems of the Muslims in all over the world is that they don't put Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala as a first priority. If they put Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala as a first priority, you will not find Muslims fighting like this, either for money, or for position, title, or for power, or for whatever. And then the disaster, when you find some Muslims, they are hurting each other and they say we are doing it for the sake of Allah. How come for the sake of Allah, you are hurting those who believe in Allah? So it, it is not true. No. 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi he knew that because he knew that he will start to suffer. But at the same time, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was happy. And he was preparing himself for this big job. Then one day the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, maybe after two, three days, he was walking, so he heard one voice. So he looked right, left, back, front, he didn't see anyone. Then he looked up, so he found Jibreel sitting or a hand or whatever between the sky and the earth and covering the whole earth with his real shape. So he was very scared, scared again. And then Jibreel told him the ayah or the surah al muddathir He told him, he, uh, Ya ayyuha al muddathir qum fa'andir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, wa thiyabaka fa'fahir, wa rijza fa'hjur, wa la tamnun tastikthir, wa li rabbika fa'skir. So this was the second revealed part of Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here again the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went back home, he was so scared, he was threatened and he was shaking and he was saying dathiruni, dathiruni means also cover me and hold me and so on. But, but then we know from this what is the mission of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We go first to Iqra and then we come back to Ya Ayyuh al Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Iqra means read. What was the first order from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to us as Muslims? It was Iqra. Means read. Means learn. Do not think that knowledge is not important in Islam. Islam was based on knowledge. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the first order he gave the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to study, to learn, to educate yourself. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said that I am unable to read and write, then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he told him, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala told him, read, educate yourself, learn in the name of Allah. It means whenever you want to do something, do not think that you can do it alone. You do it in the name of Allah. You cannot read, but but in the name of Allah, you will be able to learn. You cannot do this thing that you really want to do it, but in the name of Allah, you can do it. So never give up the mercy of Allah. Your Lord is the one who creates. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq is create. Create what? Create who? We don't know. Create. 
So the first thing you hear it, Allah is the creator, as there is nothing written after it for the first time, this means that he is the creator of everything you know and everything you don't know. You know, when you hear it, you will realize and you will understand that I, that if I have the relation with the creator of everything, then I have the power over everything. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to make you understand more, to make you feel relaxed more, to comfort you that he knows what is he saying. So he said, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ He created the human being from the uh, alaq is the, uh, the this, hmm? clock. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is showing you that He knows who are you because He created you. Read, learn, study, seek knowledge. Your Lord is the most generous. Why, why generous here? What, what is the relation? It is for us to understand that do not depend on your ability when you are learning. If I am learning for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, I may spend time which is enough to learn one page. But because it is for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He may teach me 100 page at the same time. Is it difficult for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to do so? It is not difficult. But maybe it is difficult for us to be qualified to get this. But still, it is not impossible. With the determination, there is nothing difficult. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was unable to read and write. And why he was unable to read and write? I mean, why Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he already prepared the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to become a prophet since he was born. You know, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was born, he was born, uh, I don't know what we call this in English, but you know, normally, normally, the the infant after maybe a few weeks, you know, his navel should be cut or should be it will be removed. You know this, right? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, since he was born, it was clean and ready and cut, no need for anyone to touch it. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, since the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala was preparing him to become a messenger. Then how come he didn't let him learn how to read and write? Well, actually, it was not really difficult. Not, not difficult for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, but even it was not difficult for human beings to learn. But still, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was unable to read and write. Why? First, first, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he was able to read and write, then maybe those people in Mecca, those disbelievers, they will say, he studied this in from other books 
what he is telling us from Quran, it is from himself. He already studied, he already read it before, and now he is saying it. So this is the first reason. Another, another reason, another reason is that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he received the Quran, when it is revealed, when any part of Quran revealed to him, he used to say it right away. And some of the companions, they used to write it. And later, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he used to say it again. And from time to time, he say it, he repeat it, exactly the same, without any missing part and without any adding part. You know, even a very good speaker, when he talks, if next time he wants to say the same, he will not be able to say it exactly the same. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he used to say it, of course, Quran. He used to say it exactly the same, in the same way, the same marks, the same tone, the same everything. And actually, this is one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons why Allah Taala revealed the Quran. Sometimes you find the beginning of the, of the surah is Alif, Lam, Mi. Or you find Ha, Mi. Or you find Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, So they are letters. See Allah Taala. For example, in chapter, for example, in chapter two, Allah Taala starts chapter two by saying Alif, Lam, Mi. How we write Alif, Lam, Mi? Alif, Lam, Mi. Allah Taala says in another ayah, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadra. How we write Alam? Same Alif Lam Mi. Still, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, doesn't know how to read and write. But he still, when he revealed Quran to them, he still said that one Alif Lam Mi. And he said this one Alam. Why that one Alif Lam Mi? It, it is for you. You, the disbelievers in Mecca, who know how to read and write, I am showing you that Allah Taala is talking to you according to your tongue. This is Alif, and this is Lam, and this is Mim. Those are the letters that you are using in your life. So Allah Taala, He was the teacher of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, He was the teacher of the companions. And today, if you also want to learn from Allah Taala and from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is not difficult. If you want Allah Taala to be your defender, it is not difficult. How it is not difficult? Allah Taala already say in chapter two, "Wattaqu Allah wa yu'allimukum Allah." Obey Allah, be righteous to Allah. He will teach you. If you want Allah Taala to teach you, then you obey Him, you be righteous, He will teach you. This is one part. Another part, Allah Taala says, 
in chapter 22, he says, Inna Allah yudafi'u anil ladina amanu. Allah is defending those who believe. So, we have it, it is clear. You want to learn from Allah, be righteous. Then, how to be righteous? Is it difficult? It is not difficult. Also, it is clear and mentioned that how to be righteous? It is to believe in Allah or to deal with Allah as if you are watching Him. You cannot watch Him, but He is watching you. The righteousness is to worship Allah as if you see Him. <coughs> you don't see Him, but He sees you. You know, imagine if you are in the company. Imagine if you are in the company and then you know that your boss is hearing you. He is not sitting with you, but maybe there are speakers or whatever, he hears you. Will you say, or will you disobey him? Will you say something, make him angry? You will if you want to be fired. But in general, of course you will not. Right or wrong? Now, here is the point. Do you really believe that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is hearing you? You believe? Then, do you really practice or do you really check before you say anything, not to say something, make Allah angry? This is one thing. Another thing, it is for watching. Imagine if, imagine if your boss or your parents, they are watching you. Will you do something, make them angry? You will not. Now, do you really believe that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is watching you? You do. Then, do you really check before you do anything that you are not doing something making Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala angry with you? This is the part of Iman, of belief. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala already make it so clear. الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Those that once they hear the name of Allah, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their heart start to have this special feeling that Allah is watching me. But He is not watching me because He wants to put me in the hell. He is watching me because He loves me. Because He will correct me when I make mistakes. So this is the righteousness. Then how about the belief? In Allah Allah defend those who believe. How to become a believer? Who are those believers? We already mentioned it. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said in chapter 23, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Believers are successful. Who are they? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala make it clear. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those when they pray, they pray with submission. When we pray today, do we pray with submission? Or we pray with a lot of ideas here? Oh, we pray with a lot of details here, especially Asaf, you know, in Ramadan, what are we going to eat, and what are we going to cook, and, and, and. Or, 
at the end of the month, tomorrow I'm going to receive my salary. What am I going to do with the salary here and there? We said this before. When we say Allahu Akbar, it means Allah is greater. It is not Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. So greater of what? Greater than what? Greater than any other thing you are thinking about now. Now don't think of anything. Allah is greater than whatever you think. Just think of Allah. This is the meaning of Allahu Akbar. When I start praying, the first thing I need to remind myself is that now I am with the one who is greater than any other thing. I am poor and I'm thinking, what am I going to do with my small salary? Forget it. Allah is greater than this. I have problems. I have either finance problems, social problems, health problems, any kind of problem, but it is time to pray. Even if it is not time to pray, I pray and I say Allahu Akbar. Allah is bigger and greater than my problem. He will solve it for me. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in all of his life, whenever he has a problem, whenever he has a matter that he he wants to think of it, how to solve it, what he says, كان كلما حزبه أمر قام بالصلاة. He prayed. So this is the first thing. قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. Next. والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون. Those who are away from the لغو. Those who are away from the nonsense talk. And see here there is something. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala didn't say and those who are away from backbiting. He didn't say those who are away from gossiping. He said those who are away from lahu, nonsense. Do you know what is the meaning of lahu? Lahu is the talk that is not useful and not hurting anyone. Yeah, like did you see that Korean movie star and did you see that that series of that, you know, movie from Hong Kong and that one and this one, this one is more handsome than that one and that one is more beautiful than this one. See, we are not saying any bad thing, but this is low. Then imagine if we are not only making love, no, we are even backbiting people and gossiping people. This is Then and those who are doing the zakat. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala didn't say walladina hum li zakati dafi'un. Dafi'un means paying. Allah says fa'ilun means doing. So it means that the zakat is not only the money you pay. No, it is the purification. How you purify yourself. How you try to purify others around you, how to purify the things you have. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is teaching us everything. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is telling us that this teaching is not only for this life, it is also for the hereafter. And it is not only for the hereafter, it is also for this life. Now, 
Now we go to Ya Ayyuhal Mudakkar, to the second, the second revealed part of Quran. We already said the first one, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil-qalam. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he is teaching bil-qalam, it means, qalam means pen, but it means that he is teaching with details and that you need to read and write to learn. Then Allama al Insana Malam Yalam, he taught the mankind, the human being, the things that he doesn't know. We go to the second part. Then Qom Fa'anvir. Qom means stand up. So this is an order from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to stand up and start to do the da'wah. Qom Fa'anvir. Fa'anvir means you give the news and you warn people, tell them about Islam. See, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, Qom. Qom means stand up. He didn't say sleep. He didn't say relax. He even didn't say sit. So it means, if you are really going to do things for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you have to understand that you will be tired. Do not say that, yeah, I want to learn Islam, and I want to teach Islam, and I want to become Imam, and I want to become Mufti, and I want to become everything, but, okay, I'm sitting here, let people come and teach me. We say that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He gave the order to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First, the first order, Iqra, learn. The second order, Qom, stand up, work. Qom, Fa'anbir. You stand up and then Anbir, start to word the people, start to talk to the people, start to tell them that, hey, wake up. You will die one day. Then, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ And you, you praise your Lord. You appreciate what your Lord is giving you. So it means you depend on your Lord. Don't worry. Remind yourself always that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is with you. What is the meaning of Rabbata Fakabir? Rabbata your Lord. Kabir means say Allahu Akbar. Kabir means say Akbar. Rabbata is your Lord Allah. So Warabbata Fakabir means say Allahu Akbar. We go back to the same point. When I say Allahu Akbar, it means Allah is greater, Allah is bigger. So I remind myself that I am not alone. The one who is bigger, the one who is greater, is always with me. Then, This is also another thing. Thiyab means close. Bahir means keep it clean, but clean not only clean that it doesn't have tomato sauce. Clean, it means that it is also the source of getting everything is clean. Then what is the factor? A risk is any kind of things relate, uh, any kind of thing lead you 
to a sin. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, Inna ma al-khabru wa al-mayshir wa al-ansab wa al-islam, Rijzun min amal al-shaytan rajtanihu. This rijz, it means anything that leads you to a big sin, to a big sin, so it is a sin. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala there, He said, Vajtanibu. Vajtanibu, it doesn't mean that it is haram, don't eat it or drink it or do it. Vajtanibu, it means be away from it totally. If you can, don't be in a place that it has one of those things. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, Wala tamnun tastakthir. What is the meaning of Wala tamnun tastakthir? It means, and do not, see, this is another thing, and do not be also, and also do not be so nice in a way that you become naive. This is, this is also an important part that it's okay, it's okay. The one who is going beat me, the one who is coming beat me, it's okay, no problem, no, it doesn't mean this. Then, then the last one, the last one is what? What the Rabbi Now, this is the point. The last one is that and be patient. It is for the sake of Allah. And here there is something we need we need to understand. Here we need to understand something. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says Fasbir. Fasbir is a command verb. Isbir it means be patient. Now what is the relation? I am going to become a messenger. Why to be patient? Actually, this is the important thing. You need to be patient if you are talking about Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allah wa Ta'ala says in chapter 31, when Luqman, alayhi salam, when Luqman is teaching his son, what did he say? He said, Ya Bunaya, Aqim is Salah. My son, Aqim is Salah, said the prayer. Waqmar bil Maru, enjoin good deeds. Wanha anil munka, forbid bad deeds. Wasbar ala ma asabak, and be patient for what you will get. So, what does it mean? It means if you said the prayer, if you enjoy good deeds, if you forbid bad deeds, for sure something bad will happen to you. But something bad, according to what people see outside. But it is not bad, in fact. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We said yesterday he suffered a lot. But today, today, do we consider the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a loser or a winner? A winner. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all the suffering he had, because of the suffering he had. Because of the suffering he had, we are Muslims today. And the Prophet Muhammad said, If Allah wa ta'ala, if Allah wa ta'ala use you as a tool to make someone Muslim, if you could make someone Muslim, only one, it is better for you than what is on earth totally. This is for one Muslim. Now, now see all of those Muslims.
Muslim since the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, until the day of judgment. All of them, they are on the shoulder of the Prophet Muhammad So he is a winner or not? So do not look at the obstacle as an obstacle when you are talking about Allah wa ta'ala. It is not an obstacle actually, it is a gift. It is a training. And when someone who is always in the first class, you know, in the first grade, he never he never go to the second year, third year, he's always at the first year. So the student who is always in the first year, he will have the same questions always. Now if you don't know, in case you are in the school, and you don't know what is the meaning of fail and pass, but every year you are receiving the same questions. This year you receive those questions. Next year you receive the same questions. Does it mean that last year you fail or pass? It means you fail. You fail. And then next year and next year, every year you are receiving the same questions. This means that you were never upgraded. No way to compare. When today you have this problem, and until next year you still have the same level of problem, you are still here. So this means that you are upgrading yourself or not? This means that you are not upgrading yourself. But today I have a finance problem. And tomorrow I still have the finance problem and plus some health problem. After tomorrow I still have the finance problem and the health problem plus some other problem. Does it mean that I will die with the problems? No. All they may be released, inshallah. But the main point is that, am I making use of these problems? This is the point. If I am making use of it, I am learning from it. So this means that I am making use of what Allah Taala is giving me. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard those ayahs, he preferred himself, he knew that he has a big job. Now, before we end today, because tomorrow, inshallah, we will keep going with how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu how he started to spread Islam and so on. But before we finish, there is one more thing also I want you to, to know it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to receive the wahi, the revealing in different ways. So, the first part, we already mentioned it, which was the dream, the first six months. So this is one way. Now, another way, sometimes Jibril alayhi salam, he comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the shape of a man. And when this used to happen to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu normally the companions, they used to see him. But of course they see him as a man. Like once, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was sitting and then one person, he came, nobody knew who is he, he just came 
he sit next to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He put his knee, you know, touching the knee of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Jibril, that man, he was Jibril. He was asking the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam questions. And whenever he asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a question, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered, and that man say, "You are right." And then after he left, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked, "Do you know who is this?" They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. They said, Allah and His Messenger, they know we don't know. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, this is Jibreel, he came to teach you Islam. So this is another way. One, one way is that sometimes the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received something in his heart. So it comes directly from Allah to his heart, and he say it. Without seeing anyone, just something come to his heart, and he speak it out. Like what? Like the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said in one hadith, he said that it was sent to my heart. It means Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala told me to my heart that there is no any soul or there is no anyone needs will die before he get what is written for him to get. So, this is what the Prophet Muhammad said. So, be righteous, fear Allah, and ask Allah Taala in a nice way. And do not be sad, do not be angry, do not be stressed when you don't get your when you don't get what you are asking for right away. And never, if it delay, if what is what you are asking for it delay, never get it by disobeying Allah. Because what is in the hand of Allah, you cannot take it from Him by disobeying. So this is hadith. So this is another way for the revealing. Another way for revealing is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, sometimes he used to see Jibreel exactly as he is Jibreel alayhi salam. And actually, this happened to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu only twice. Another way, this was the hardest way for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that it used to come to him as a, a very strong, I mean, very loud voice of a bell. The, you know, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they said that when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when something revealed to him, we used to hear the voice around him, same as the voice of, you know, a group of bees, you know, this, this voice. And 
this was the strongest upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When, when this when this used to happen, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to sweat even when it was so cold. Once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he revealed that was uh, chapter six. When chapter six was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was riding the camel, so the camel couldn't walk. You know, just sit. Because Allah Taala already said, "Inna sanuqti alayka qawla saqila." We are going to reveal to you. Qawla means tall. Saqila means heavy. A very heavy thing. So this is another way. There is one more. There are other two ways. One of them is the revealing from Allah Tabaraka wa Taala directly, directly to him. This what happened in Al Miraj. And the last one is Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. He talked to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly, means you know, talk to talk directly, and this happened in Al Isra. Or, or the first one Al Isra, this one in Al Miraj. Al Miraj. Yeah, that when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he went in Al Isra and Al Miraj, when he went up to the sky, then he talked to Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala talked to him directly. Okay, and this is also mentioned in the Hadith that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The name of that Hadith is Hadith Al Isra. In that Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Tabaraka wa Taala talked to him. And also in Quran, Allah Tabaraka wa Taala mentioned this in chapter fifty-three or fifty-four. Fifty-three, I think. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala already mentioned this also. So this is in general. This is how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became a messenger. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will talk about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how he start to spread Islam, and how, and who are the first Muslims, and how things start to become more clear in Mecca toward the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, any questions? <laughs> okay. You want to try? Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam already told us few things only about Jibril. He didn't really mention a lot of things. Like for example, some one of the things that were mentioned is that. Uh, is that Jibril alayhi salam? He has six hundred wings. This is this is one of one of the things, and that Jibril alayhi salam, when he opened his wings, he covered the whole earth. And it is not really mentioned more details like how his face looked like, how his shape. It is not really mentioned. I mean, as far. As But as far as I know, but what we are, are sure about it is that, insha Allah, on the day of judgment, we will see Jibril, 
and inshallah we will see him in a good way because actually in charge of the scale on the day of judgment. So inshallah we will see him. Inshallah. Inshallah. Any other questions? No questions. Okay, so we stop here, inshallah. And tomorrow we keep going. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wa salli lahumma ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.